Hello, Cryptonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli, here to give you the top 10 daily stats, as well as your crypto news of the day. Hey, Jake, how's it going? How's your day so far? Um, going pretty well. I'm glad to uh, be back on the crypto scene here. Uh, you... Nothing I nothing I like more than doing crypto stuff. <laughs> You do know that we passed three trillion dollars. Yeah, you tweeted at me, remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to officially put it on the podcast because yeah, last time you were like, "Ah, oh, we hit it. We didn't get there." I was like, "Man, we." I was one day shy, one day, because the next day after that, that's when it broke out. Yeah, yeah. You uh, it, literally, I called you on it, and then uh, the universe heard me and said, <laughs> "F you, Jake. <laughs> we're gonna rebuild <laughs> three trillion. Ha ha ha." It was there, man. I think it was at two, like two hundred ninety. Two point nine two, yeah. yeah, it was, it yeah. was pretty it was... close, but it was just still, you know, eighty trillion, eighty billion dollars away or something, which is not a lot, not a small amount when we're talking about three trillion total. But um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so for all those, thanks for you for coming. This content is for entertainment purposes only. Any comments made by us, the host, or any guests we may have on the show is not financial advice. Perfect. All right, let's get started with your top 10 daily stats provided by CoinGecko.com. Number one, Bitcoin settling at $66,762.17 with a seven-day gain of 5.7% and a market cap of $1.25 trillion. Number two, Ethereum settling at $4,722.87 with a 2.7% gain and a market cap of $558 billion. Number three, Binance Coin settling at $630.91 with a seven day gain of 13.6% and a market cap of $106 trillion. Number four, but, Tether. Uh, that's billion dollars, not trillion dollars. Sorry, excuse me, trillion. Yeah, <laughs> trillion. Billion. Billion. <laughs> billion, billion. Ah. Yeah. Number four, Tether settling at $1 with a no gain, no loss and on a market cap of $75 billion. <laughs> Number six, Solana settling at $238.29 with a seven day gain of 8% and a market cap of $72 billion. Number, oh, that's weird. It goes from six to five. Huh. I know. It's because it's been going back and forth. Back and it's forth. really close to each other. Yeah. Yep. I guess Cardano is number five or number six? Number six, I no, guess. It's five. It says... it's, it's, it's six now, but it was five just, just a bit ago. So. Okay. So it's Cardano settling at $2.24 with a seven-day gain of 13.4% and a market cap of $71 billion. Number seven, XRP settling at $1.24 with a seven-day gain of 9.1% and a market cap of $58 billion. Number eight, Polkadot settling at $50.72 with a seven-day loss of 1.1% and a market cap of $53 billion. Number nine, Dogecoin settling at 27 cents with a seven day loss of 0.9% and a market cap of $35 billion. Number 10, USD coin settling at $1 with a no gain, no loss, and a market cap of $34 billion. That there, Cryptonauts, is your top 10 daily stats. Obviously, we have Shiba, Terra, Avalanche, Litecoin, and Chainlink down below. Yeah, Litecoin's really been climbing up lately. It was yeah. up around 17 or 18. And it is it is gaining, gaining value here pretty quick. It's got all three. If you're if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see all three across the one hour, the 24 hour, and the seven day are all green on Litecoin. Mm. It is the only coin it, other than Cardano, I should say, that is all green. The only other one is USD, but that's just because it's stable. Well, so on it's, here, uh, on mine, it shows Avalanche is all green as well. Oh, right. Avalanche is up. Yeah, Avalanche yeah. and Litecoin, sorry. My bad. But yes, it's it's one of the few that are that are gaining by leaps and bounds um, right now. You can see uh, the the uh, seven-day chart is really just pointing upward like an eggplant emoji. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, so it's it's... It's weird how it's, it's gaining a mud. It used to be you know neck not, neck and neck with Bitcoin before Ethereum or any of these other coins right. existed. So never... let's talk about the candies. Hold on, let's go. The market cap the overall market cap uh -huh. is at three point three trillion dollars, down by one point one percent. All right, your candies. I did not collect them today, intentionally, so you guys can see me collect them. Admire the candy collecting. Fifty. <laughs> All right, there we go. I got my fifty. 
Now, obviously, if you don't have a Coin Gecko account, make sure to get them. Collect the free candies every single day and get some awesome free NFTs, books, or discounts. All right. Go ahead, Jake. Remember, if you appreciate our content and, you, and you're watching on YouTube, you can like and subscribe. We really appreciate that. It helps us uh, fit into the algorithm properly. And if you like the content and you want to know when it's coming up, hit the notification bell. And uh, we post every Wednesday and Sunday. And lately, we've been doing interviews, podcast interviews on Thursdays. But uh, you can check it out on YouTube. Check it out on Discord as well. And you can check out all the stuff that's been going on anything that's been happening you can talk to us we're always on there i know johnny is always on there i'm on there I, I, i'm pretty much always on there too i shouldn't say that um you can probably get me if whether wherever i am because i'm on my phone but uh, we also have a patreon account now with uh prices at three dollars five dollars and ten dollars the higher you subscribe the more content you get like our amas and extra interview information and if you'd like to support the platform in any other way like through crypto bitcoin ethereum binance or bat all the links are in the description. Oh. Below, below, below. Below, 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 below. All right. <laughs> First news. Oh, by the way, we are getting our news today from Decrypt.co. First news written by Jeff Benson. NFT artist Beeple sells latest work for $29 million at auction. Look at that. That is what he sold. I'm assuming the human one. It's not quite $69 million, but hey, $29 million isn't too shabby. Beeple, the digital artist whose tokenized artwork every day is the first 500 days, sold for a record of $69.3 million at a Christie's auction this March, has followed it up with a $28.9 million sale today of a hybrid physical and digital work. It's the second largest sum paid for an NFT or at least a piece of art accompanied by a dynamic NFT. Human One is a 3D moving sculpture depicting a person in a spacesuit moving through a variety of climates. Christie's, which expected the, the piece to fetch about $15 million, uh, the, brought the hammer down at $25 million. The auction netted $3.9 million on top of that for the buyer's premium. Ryan Zerter, former venture, venture partner at Olaf Carson Wee's Polychain Capital, claimed the winning bid. And there it is. Can I play this? Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Wow, that's actually really cool. That this is what NFTs are now. Whoa. <laughs> I think it could be anything, can't they? Dude, that's wicked cool. That I gotta replay that. <laughs> wow. I am mind blown by this. For those that are listening, I highly recommend you jump over to our C3 Media channel on YouTube and check out what I am checking out. Human One is the first physical piece of art form Michael Winkleman, otherwise known as Beeple. The accompanying digital piece is connected to a deed of ownership issued on the Ethereum blockchain. Beeple's everyday, everydays hold the record for the most expensive NFT ever sold and helped propel non-fungible tokens out of the dusty corners of crypto and into mainstream in on the trend. For example, CryptoPunks, a collection of 10,000 pixelated characters, regularly sell for millions on <laughs> online, while Board a Yacht Club NFTs, which look just how they sound, have claimed large sums at Christie's competitors, Sotheby's. NFTs origin... Okay, we don't need to read that. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. What do you think? I think man? the last comment there is a trading volume for the digital tokens extends past ten billion dollars oh, yeah. in the third quarter, a year a year over year increase of literally thirty eight thousand percent. Jesus, that's crazy. There are just and just for as a tack on to this, just because this is the people is the most highest you know, grossing uh, artist, uh, living artist, might I might add, uh, to uh, have taken advantage of NFTs. There's a lot of amazing art on just, NFT, uh, just NFTs, um, but it's all Raven based and it's a whole lot less inexpensive. So if you're looking to buy NFTs that are similar to the ones that these are, these Ethereum NFTs, Raven is very affordable. Yeah. You don't have to worry about paying that two, three hundred dollar transaction fee. You're paying pennies, pennies. Exactly. 
much much easier to get a hold of him. And these are good NFTs. I mean, look at check out my uh, Twitter account. I have a royal bear as my as my avatar now. That's actually a good one, man. I like that. Looks like you. That's my favorite. You know, I, there's only one other. The Obi Wan Kenobi bear is the one I want, but I I'm gonna hold on on that one for a while. So Coinbase profits drop 75 percent in Q3 despite Doge ship listings. Right. Wow. Well, that's because they're meme coins. This is Jeff Benson. Coinbase, the largest U.S.-based cryptocurrency exchange by trading volume, reported third quarter earnings of 406 million dollars today. While the number represents a 500% increase over Q3 uh, 2020, it's nonetheless a sizable drop from its record April through June. Its first reporting period as a publicly traded company, when it posted a net income of $1.6 billion. Financial companies with crypto products have mostly been reporting reduced Q3 revenues compared to Q2, when markets were percolating. Something uh, Coinbase CFO Alicia Haas alluded to in today's investor call when she said trading volume across the entire crypto spot market declined quarter over quarter in Q3. Well, I mean, this is not the stock market, right? Um, Square, which permits Bitcoin buying and trading via its cash app, mm -hmm. announced a 23% drop in Bitcoin revenue in Q3, contributing to a slight decrease in the overall profit for the firm. Robinhood's drop-off was steeper, the crypto, the crypto revenue uh, falling 78%. Total revenue from the stock and crypto trading app fell $565 million to $365 million. These are obviously big numbers that most people don't deal with. Zoom out, though, to year-over-year -year earnings, and the picture is brighter. All three companies are writing crypto as a long-term strategy rather than a short-term fix, and this is, of course, what they should be doing. Coinbase is rapidly expanding its listings, and unlike previous quarters, Bitcoin and Ethereum no longer controlled a majority of trading volume or transaction revenue. And we definitely saw that from Sheep. It got listed. Majority of trading volume or transaction revenue. Right. Bitcoin and Ethereum revenue were down 26%, and a total of Q1, 21%, 22%, and Q3. Other crypto assets accounted for 57% of transaction revenue, and as well as 59% of trading volume. So people are pretty much heading toward the other coins, which isn't surprising, right? Not everybody can afford Ethereum or Bitcoin. The crypto exchange has worked to add new assets, expanding rapidly from the core five it kept on tap as recently as three years ago. The most notable addition has been Dogecoin, which I never thought would ever make it to the to Coinbase, which perked up uh, the company's coffers when it was added at the beginning of June, and Shiba Inu, the Doge knockoff, that began trading on the exchange at the end of last mm. quarter. We don't know precisely which assets customers are going to adopt, so our strategy is support all legal assets, says Haas. You know, I'm, I'm glad they're doing it. So. Yeah. Side note, did you know that AMC is going to start accepting Shiba? <laughs> Not just Doge, but Shiba as well. Yeah, that's good. That's crazy, <laughs> man. I think they're taking anything and, anything and everything. Uh, what can I get for one Shiba? Oh, nothing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about 100 million Shiba? For some, okay, some it's, still, it's still not very much, right? A hundred million sheep is like six grand, I think. For some gummy worms. Five grand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next news. Tell us about Gary V. Gary V. A real NFT winter market pullback is coming. Written by Andrew Hayward. Investors and NFT entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk is incredibly bullish on the future of NFT, including for collectibles, ticketing, and more. Even so, however, he believes that a significant pullback in valuation is sure to happen. Speaking on Decrypt Editor-in-Chief Dan Roberts at today's Crypto Goes Mainstream event in collaboration with Yahoo Finance, Vaynerchuk, the creator of the Ethereum-based VFriends, plus a collector of CryptoPunks and other NFTs, said that he believes an NFT bear market is coming. The conversation is about to get very interesting when we hit the an NFT winter because there's way too much short-term greed and supply and demand issues, he said, while discussing why he believes people buy and invest in NFTs. An NFT acts like a deed of ownership to a probably scarce digital item such as an image, video file, or video game item. The NFT market exploded early 2021, generating $2.5 billion worth of trading volume in the first half of the year. However, the early year buzz appeared to fade in late spring and into early summer, promoting, excuse me, prompting some, some to suggest that the NFT craze was simply 
a short-term fad. Ultimately, the market surged to new highs beginning in August with DAP, with DAP radar reporting $10.67 billion worth of trading volume for Q3 alone, a 700% increase over Q2 2021. Uh, along with immense trading activity, the latest boom has pushed popular collections like CryptoPunks, Board 8 Yacht Club, and Axie Infinity to new heights as well. Uh, Vaynerchuk didn't say when he thinks a pullback will come, but he spoke to a, politi- uh, to a potential extent of the drop he believes will come and how he- it would be uh, at, uh, how do you say that word? Uh, and uh, something. Yeah. Yikes. Uh-oh. My bad. You couldn't even hear me. I'm yeah, talking no. to myself. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> it's analogous. Analogous. To rise and fall to the top stocks in the past. <clears throat> There's going to be real crash, I think he said, in response to a question about previous short-term windows in which the NFT market dipped. The person on the other side is going to be like, Gary, look, the CryptoPunks are worth $30,000. They were $800,000. And I'm going to say, hey, <laughs> and I'm going to say, here, look at this chart on Yahoo Finance that shows you Amazon, shows you Amazon stock. Look what happened in March, April 2000, when the whole internet craze crashed. Yes, everything caught up in the undercut because greed and short-term financial interest overvalued everything. Short-term behavior overvalued everything. Uh, it got washed away, he said, and it was a, it, and was the time to buy Amazon and eBay because those are real companies. Vaynerchuk said that he believes the majority of NFT projects will lose significant value over time, but the blue chip projects will rise to even greater heights. He called out uh, collections such as CryptoPunks and Board 8 Yacht Club, as well as Peace from XCopy, who has multiple NFTs sales above the million dollar mark. XCopy shows all the nuances of potentially becoming a Warhol, a Banksy, or a Pollock, uh, said Vaynerchuk. All right, I'll leave it there on that one. <clears throat> and actually, let's read this last part here. NFTs are going to be here for the rest of everybody's life, and it's going to get more meaningful, not less, Vaynerchuk said. Yeah, he's right about that. I mean, just because it's a um, bull market right now doesn't mean it won't fall. Of course it will. And it will always come back. Store store value. Some people will lose. Some people will win. And yeah, people just have their diamond hands out there, even with their NFTs, will come back eventually. I mean, think about it. what at the uh, beginning of 2020, where was Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was down. Yeah, it, it was down. at three thousand. Yeah. It was at three thousand dollars. Anybody can go back in time and buy, buy Bitcoin at three thousand mm-hmm. dollars would happily do it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, NFT, uh, so continuing on here with Scott Cipollina's NFTs capture deep social component of crypto, Solana's Anatoly uh, Yakovenko says. NFTs market is booming. Well, yes, not according to uh, Vaynerchuk. Vaynerchuk. And according to Anatoly uh, Yakovenko, the founder of Solano, it's now become obvious in retrospect that NFTs have become, a, become the cultural icons that unite the crypto industry. But even if it's now obvious in hindsight, that certainly wasn't the case a few years ago. And if um, you guys know what an NFT is, the buzz around NFTs led many to ask a simple question. What's the point? Should we look at NFTs as financial assets, as art, or as a symbol of crypto culture? For Yakovenko, who helped build the startup Solana network, the aim of competing with Ethereum, the answer is now clear. I didn't expect it going to be NFTs, but I kind of felt there's a deep social crypt component to crypto. I knew I'm not going to be able to predict what it looks like, but it's obvious in retrospect, NFTs are it, he told Decrypt earlier today in the Solana Breakpoint Conference in Lisbon, Portugal. Yakovenko's uh, comments follow recent news that consumers can now purchase Solana NFTs using either USD on FTX's regulated marketplace, FTX NFTs. NFTs right now is a very niche market specifically because it has grown up as a DeFi product, FTX US President Brett Harrison told Decrypt. Yakovenko also told Decrypt that uh, the ever burgeoning NFTs marketing uh, market represents a huge opportunity for exchanges to break into the decentralized finance space, referring to the range of DeFi products that enable their users to trade 
borrow, and lend crypto assets without third-party interme intermediaries. That's a huge opportunity, I think, for exchanges to move into this kind of generalized access point to DeFi, to decentralized exchanges, to NFTs, and to everything else that's going on in the space, he said. Solana's native cryptocurrency, SOL, or SOL, which has experienced a year of immense growth, recently reached an all-time high of $260. In addition, the Solana ecosystem has seen a huge increase in the total value of DeFi projects built on the network. At the time of this writing, over $15 billion of total value is now locked into DeFi products on the Solana network. Mm. All right. Solana. It's only the beginning, right? Yep. All right, next news written by Jeff Benson. Robin Hood, crypto COO, wear no rush to list tokens like SHIB. Ask any crypto trader on Robin Hood what they'd like the company's executive, uh, what, what they ask the company's executive, and you're likely to hear that the following question, when SHIB. Christine Brown, COO of Robin Hood, crypto, told Decrypt Editor-in-Chief Dan Roberts at today's Crypto Goes Mainstream live event at the company's uh, that the company is taking its time with listing Shiba Inu, the 11th largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization and the hottest asset since Dogecoin, which helped rocket Robinhood into the crypto conversation. Quote, the first thing is uh, is that we're not going to talk about it, Brown said, about the decision to list specific assets. More importantly, the company isn't following the route of Coinbase, whose C CEO, Brian Armstrong, has vowed to become the Amazon of assets and list every asset that's legal. <laughs> Sorry. Oh God. I also think I also think that our strategy strategy is a bit different than a lot of other players out there who just uh, who are just racing to list as many assets as possible right now. Brown said, "We think that the short term gain we might get is not worth the long term trade off for our users." Okay. Brown reiterated that Robinhood is a safe safety first company and added we want to make sure that we're working and assessing everything from a regulatory perspective really well robin hood the mobile app that allows people to quickly trade popular stocks and seven cryptocurrencies has previously come under fire over its customer protection policies the company received a record 70 million dollar fine from the financial industry regulatory authority in june over several issues first service outage from march 2020 resulted in individual customers being unable to complete trades many finra said uh, lost tens of thousands of dollars. Second, FINRA said the company ne ne neg neglect negligently yes, negligently negligently communicated false and misleading information as far as back as 2016, causing customers to see wrong account balances or misinterpret trade risk. Uh, that culminated in a 2020 suicide of Alex Kearns, a college student who mistakenly thought he had lost $700,000 on the platform via a leveraged trade. That hurts. That. Uh, all of that predates Christine Brown's uh, tenor as Ro uh, Robin Hood COO Brown, who came aboard in April of this year, has consistently em emphasized customer safety and regulatory compliance for crypto purchase, echoing the early days of Coinbase. <clears throat> and let's scroll on down to the bottom here. That's a lot. Let's see, yeah, Robinhood. Robinhood has taken on Coinbase's strategy in other areas. However, Brown confirmed that 1.6 million of the app's users are on the waiting list for its wallets, uh, which, which the company has been promising for the better part of the year. That will allow customers to take the assets they buy on Robinhood off the app so they can participate in decentralized finance and other parts of the crypto ecosystem. Brown said that the company has released an alpha for the product. Just don't expect to store SHIB on it. Huh. So there's going to be a Robinhood uh, Dex wallet, huh? Yep. Or just yeah, Ro a Robinhood, or, or Robinhood, uh, just. Uh... I think it's just so you can move it out. I don't think that they're going to hold oh, the wallet. So they're just going to unlock something. it. They're just going to unlock it then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Yeah, they want. I mean, it, it's it's um, it's strange to see Robinhood say, "Yeah, we're not going to keep you guys in in this wall garden like uh, Apple products," but uh, it is going to be interesting to see how they continue because I. I Robin Hood's obviously they started from the idea of making trading free, um, and within the platform it is free, but without the platform it's not. So mm. interesting. We'll just have to see how it goes. The next article from Stephen Graves: Grayscale CEO Bitcoin ETF. Remember to drink when I say ETF has become a political issue. 
ongoing question of whether U.S. regulators will approve a Bitcoin spot exchange traded fund, that's also known as an ETF, <laughs> has become a political issue, according to Michael Sonnenschein, uh, CEO of the digital asset manager Grayscale. Speaking to the CryptoGo's mainstream event hosted by Decrypt and Yahoo Finance, Grayscale CEO Michael Sonnenschein has said that the debate has now spread beyond the investment community to draw in politicians. Last week, we've seen actually we actually seen bipartisan support for a Bitcoin spot ETF from Emmer and Soto. He said, referring to the bipartisan letter sent by Rep. Uh, Tom Emmer, Republican, and Rep. Darren Soto, Democrat, to the SEC Chairman Gary Gensler. In the letter, Emmer and Soto uh, questioned why the SEC was prepared to approve Bitcoin futures ETF. Mm -hmm. You are not equally or more comfortable allowing trading to commence in ETFs. Sorry, I'm going to stop emphasizing that based on spot Bitcoin, given that Bitcoin futures ETF ultimately tracks the price of the same asset, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In the past, the SEC has repeatedly denied applications for an mm -hmm. ETF tied to the Bitcoin spot, spot, spot market, yes, yeah, spot market, pardon me, while recently approving several Bitcoin futures ETFs. Sonnenschein picked up, uh, Jane, I, I, John, I guess, picked up on the argument by uh, made by reps Emmer and Soto, noting that the SEC is really just concerned over the underlying Bitcoin market, things like price manipulation in, or in regulated markets of significant size. Courtney Sunshine's, uh, the crypto industry and now politicians are making the case that if you're comfortable with the derivatives and those futures contracts are deriving their pricing from the spot market itself, then you are inherently also saying you're comfortable with the spot market. He added that the present uh, when presented with ETFs based on easily stored commodities such as gold, you've seen investors gravitate toward the product that physically holds the commodity, even though there are derivative project products, futures-based products. While the SEC has repeatedly highlighted Bitcoin's volatility in warnings to investors, Sonnenschein argued that investors who are action, uh, actioning investment today are doing so knowing full well that a full and well that crypto and their investments are inherently going to have volatility associated with them, adding that volatility has been inherent to the asset class since the beginning. The emergence of crypto derivatives, borrowing and lending have acted as a catalyst for the influx of new and crypto investors into crypto, he said, noting that there are types of tools that investors are used to having in their dis at their disposal when they think about uh, accessing an asset class. Grayscale has long harbored ambitions to turn its flagship product, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, or GBTC, into a full-fledged Bitcoin ETF. In October, the digital asset manager filed a formal application with the SEC to convert GBTC, uh, GBTC into a exchange-traded fund backed by physical Bitcoin. The firm first announced its intentions to do so in April, noting that the firm's 100% committed to converting GBTT to an ETF. And the timing was driven by the regulatory environment. So I, I think his argument is sound. But yeah, I get it how he's pointing out it being political. So Yeah, I'm looking through the list of current ETFs that are waiting approval, and there's... Let me see. Just to look down, it looks like there's crypto and Bitcoin ETF, uh, Bitcoin Commodity Trust, Van Eck, uh, NYDIG, Wisdom Tree, First Trust Skybridge, uh, Wise Origin, Galaxy Bitcoin, another Van Eck Ethereum, One River Carbon Neutral Bitcoin Trust. There's there's so many of them. That was just a a, a small portion of them. That are just waiting approval. Everyone's putting in, but there's there's no. That's 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 wrong, man. That's wrong. I guess to protect the American citizens, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Written by Emily uh, Tonelli. Apple CEO Tim Cook says he holds crypto. Today at New York Times Deal Book Online Summit, CEO of, A of Apple, Tim Cook, stated his personal opinion about owning crypto. 
I think it's reasonable to own it as part of a of a diversified portfolio, he said. The CEO also confirmed that he personally owns crypto, though explicitly stated that he is not in bet. That, that this is not investment advice, but his personal op- uh, opinions in regards to his own portfolio. Furthermore, the company Apple does not have any holdings in crypto, nor does Apple have any plans to join the countless companies that have already added crypto to their portfolio. However, there are other things that we are definitely looking at, said Cook. Cook's comments are just the latest in crypto's entrance into the mainstream, and given his position at the head of the world's second most valuable company, many in the business world are watching closely. The shift to cryptocurrencies among traditional financiers could be attributed to the effects of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, large stimulus package from central banks, and a decrease in government trust. Many corporations accelerated this trend by making headlines investments in Bitcoin amid the weakening of the taboo of crypto. In August 2020, MicroStrategy invested $425 million into Bitcoin and now holds around 114,042 Bitcoin, valuing over $7 billion at the time of writing. Companies like Tesla, Coinbase, and Square have also significant crypto holdings ranging from over 42,000 Bitcoin to 4,000 Bitcoin. According to Buy Bitcoin Worldwide, the top 10 companies that own Bitcoin start at just under 4,000 BTC and range over 114,000 BTC, showing that the ice around the stigma of Bitcoin and crypto as a whole is thawing, potentially for good. Yep, yep. that's always good news, man. That's I, a good chunk of change right there to be yeah. holding on. Yeah. <laughs> We're not mind holding even 1,000 Bitcoin, let alone 5,000 or <laughs> 50,000. Hundred thousand. That's crazy. That's, that's quite a bit. I don't think. Actually, no. I have plenty of. I have over a hundred thousand of several coins, but they're all shit coins. They don't have, a, have any hardly any value. <laughs> like sheep, right? Yeah. You know? I never um, touched it, man. So from uh, Andrew Hayward, Todd McFarlane, uh, Steve Ao- Aoki, yeah, uh, launch crypt, uh, creator focus Solana NFT marketplace. Really? Yay, Solana. Oh my god. I like Todd McFarlane. That dude is so awesome. Back. <laughs> I I am I I, I want to hear this. I want to hear you read this, man. I, I he's like I'm a big fan of Todd. I really am. Cool. Back in 1992, comic book creator Todd McFarlane and contemporaries like Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld left powerhouse publishers Marvel and DC to launch Image Comics, a home for bold, creative, own, creator-owned stories, and flipped the industry on its head in the process. Nearly 30 years later. The Spawn creator aims to build the NFT marketplace equivalent of Image with new Solana-based platform Oddkey, created in partnership with musician and artist Steve Aoki and Aoki Industry Agency. That's not hard to pronounce at all. Oddkey, sounding like Aoki, uh, a tweaked uh, portmanteau of uh, Todd and Aoki figures. Um, McFarlane told Decrypt he cur- curated NFT, he will will be a curated NFT marketplace sold focused solely on creator-owned properties. No third-party licenses will make the cut, nor will knockoffs, and the co-founders will launch their own collectibles along with welcoming, as yet unannounced, creators from across the entertainment world. At Image Comics, we came up with this thing where we gave the best possible deal we could to the owners, said McFarlane. And then we said, if anybody wants to join us, you basically get the owner's deal. Not surprisingly, people came. McFarlane said that Oddkey will offer uh, what they believe is the best deal in the marketplace for NFT creators. However, by his book, sorry, and it also gives them the opportunity to work with a pair of creative minds who have each found success across multiple industries. The space that you're uh, coming into, if you have any interest in NFTs, is going to be headed by creative people, he said. You can hang out with people in suits that basically count money and try to figure out how to skim off you every day of your li- of their life, or you can hang out with us. We already pay our bills. We're not here to do any of the uh, any of what they're doing. And NFT acts like oh, I already described that. We went to that. McFarlane and Aoki met years ago. The pair said during a joint interview with Decrypt, and have been looking for the right opportunity to collaborate. Aoki is already well-versed in the NFT space, having released his own artwork via platforms like uh, Nifty Gateway, as well as collecting NFTs, including CryptoPunk, which he used 
uh, as his Twitter avatar, he recently partnered with NFT artist uh, People Pleaser to create a piece that sold for 138600 at Sotheby's auction with a portion of the proceeds benefiting uh, Please Aoki <laughs> Vault or PLSA0K1 Vault, which supports women NFT artists. And here is his uh, Steve Aoki's um, profile pic if you're watching on YouTube. I love the image comic comics dynamic and, and model. What Todd's done for 30 years is very much about that. He's never changed, Aoki told Decrypt. You may you make it about creators and artists first, and then you don't need to sell anything. Just bring your own community and that community comes to you. Build it and they will come, right? McFarlane uh, famously hasn't sold his original prints pages in 30 years, but will sell original digital art of Spawn for the very first time as odd key uh, on odd key as NFTs. Aoki will also release his own NFTs on Solana driven platform, plus the pair plan to collaborate on drops. As they gra gradually welcome in their creators as well, they aim to push boundaries on the NFT market. Because we're not worried about making money, we're here, we're going to be fearless in our experiments and what we do, he said. We're going to be guys that are going to try some hopeful experimental crazy stuff and a couple of them fingers crossed will work we're going to invite people to come in with the best ideas it is powered by solana's metaplex nft protocol and aoki said that they cho chose a solana over a competing platform such as ethereum due to the aspects like cheaper fees and much less energy consumption for its proof of stake consensus model with the low transaction fees, Aoki said artists on the platform won't feel like they have to sell only at higher prices. Some artists are peeking in the door, but they don't know exactly how to do it or if it's too expensive for them, said Aoki in launching of NFTs. So it's important that the minting of the fees are as low as possible so that it's easier to get into. You could sell art for $10 or you could sell it for $10,000. It's a wide open door. McFarlane joked that Aoki introduced him to NFTs by saying, hey, boomer, let me explain the world to you. <laughs> now, that's he knows the scene is a bit uh, seen a bit is entertaining himself with Oddkey. McFarlane said that he's excited to enter a new, still evolving market and explore the possibilities with digital artwork and collectibles. What's got me excited is the unknown more than anything else. He said, "We're just beginning. Nobody knows what NFTs are going to be in five years from now. Nobody knows what's going to be in the most demand. Nobody knows which artists are going to be the hottest in the space." I don't care if big companies want to put a lot of money into the space, McFarlane continued. They are as woefully ignorant as we are as, as, as to what is going to be happening in five years from now, which basically means that we're on the competitive level. Whenever you go against a billion dollar company and they don't have an advantage, you take it every time. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, oh. man. If I, McFarlane... Uh, uh, I need this guy's autograph. Like this guy is like one of those guys that I grew up watching the Spawn series. I I watched a lot of his stuff, like on 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 what was it? Uh, Instagram. I think it was Instagram that he did a lot of live streaming on there. Oh, dude, I was just amazed at. He's been doing this for thirty years, so he makes he makes these characters look like they're easy to draw, and he does them like in seconds. He's like, yeah, this you just do this and you do this and you do this, and there you go. There's Spawn. It's like what the heck did you do? How did you do that? Yeah. It's like practice, lots of practice yeah. for 30 years. Yeah. Anybody can draw. It just takes practice. Uh, well, apparently anybody can make millions off of NFTs making eight bit images. Uh, that's also true, but it's, that's all about hype in that case with the board, eight got club and uh, crypto punks as well as crypto kids. Remember crypto kids were the first NFTs out there. Yeah. And even though they are worth quite a bit, they're not worth nearly as much as the rest of the NFTs that have hit the market in the last six months. But I'm really excited that they're using the Solana network, right? That's pretty cool. Finally, finally somebody decides to use something other than Ethereum. Yeah. I mean, Raven, right? Plenty of stuff on Raven, but yeah, now you can do Raven as well. DGen, DGen smokers. And what was the other one we were talking about? The, the new apes. New, new, what, new, new, new ape yacht club or what? Uh, no, no, there's another ape set that's coming to Raven. I saw it on Twitter today. I can't think of who it is now. Oh, I'm not sure. No. It's it's another thing that's like Board Ape Yacht Club, but it's going to Raven, which I'm really excited about. I'm personally not interested in getting any of these apes, but I'm, I'm interested in seeing them come to Raven. So. Yeah. All right, next news article. How many do we have? We got like another 30 more? 
Uh, Another, written by 12, 12 articles. Cipollina. <laughs> okay, we're about 40 minutes in. Scott Cipollina, Chainlink, Sergey Nazarov predicts DeFi returns through your bank in 2022. Chainlink co-founder Sergey Nazarov believes that 2022 will see increased institutional adoption of decentralized finance. Speaking with Solana co-founder and 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 Anatoly. Uh, Yako Yakovenko during a virtual fireside chat at the Solana Breakpoint Conference in Lisbon, Portugal, Nazarov said that he expects a number of enterprises and banks at various uh, existing players to now want to lose their to now want to lose their relationship with customers and users and key institutional clients. Did I, did I misread that? It's Spe- a very long sentence. Yeah. <laughs> That was weird, yeah. Specifically, Nazarov said he envisioned that institutional DeFi growth will come via banks and the burgeoning NFT market. I expect a number of things to go live around DeFi returns through your bank or buying NFTs through an existing marketplace or some existing universe of Web 2.0 tools, he added. What's more, Nazarov predicts that there will be a flow of various uh, collateral on-chain, meaning new markets for insurance products on-chain. I think the world is going to eventually, probably in 2022, realize that there's this big market called DeFi, he, he also said. Nazarov may believe 2022 will be the year of institutional DeFi, but the DeFi industry has already come in on leaps and bounds during 2021. According to DeFi Pulse, there is a total of $113 billion total value locked in today's DeFi industry, up from $26 billion at the start of the year. A part of that, a part, part of that huge increase in TVL, Nazarov said, can be credited to PayPal, which made headlines earlier this year when it announced customers could now buy and sell crypto on the platform. If PayPal has done its research and decided to allow this type of Web 2.0 interaction with crypto, why on earth do you think that? your users won't come to you and also want to interact with custody and DeFi and so on, he added. The DeFi future might look bright, according to Nazarov, but there are still plenty of regulatory hurdles in the way. With its meteoric growth in the last year has come an increased attention from regulators. Gary Gensler, chairman of the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission, is one of those who have repeatedly banged the drum for closer regulatory oversight of the DeFi industry, arguing that DeFi platforms could be playing host to unregistered securities. Just last month, Gensler said that DeFi will end poorly without the requisite protections put in place. Yeah. Okay. This is a forewarning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see where this thing goes in the near future. As they say, if I returns to your bank next year. So Reddit co-founder and Solana Ventures team up with a hundred million dollar Web3 social media initiative. Wow. By Scott Cipollina. So, this one's quick. Uh, Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian, uh, Ohanian, excuse me, and Solana co-founder Raj Gokal uh, collectively announced at first a $50 million fund with Solana Ventures to invest in Web 3.0 social media technology today. The announcement was made at this year's Solana Breakpoint Conference in Lisbon, Portugal, and follows Gokal's recent Twitter ban, as well as Facebook's corporate rebrand to Meta in recent weeks. Recent there. Just minutes after initially announcing the initiative at uh, level of 50 million, Ohanian said on stage that the initiative will in fact be worth 100 million. I'm just changing the rules. It's worth twice as much now. Mm-hmm. Reeled you in there, ha, ha, he told cheering the cro- uh, a cheering crowd. I do need to be freed from the centralized social media. I want to get off Twitter, Google. <laughs> He's already off of it. Added during the panel. Help me to do that. Build the next Twitter. Build the next Facebook. Build the next Instagram. I've got a special prize for whomever helps me get off and delete my accounts. That sounds bad. Delete my accounts from those centralized services, he added. Ohanian reacted by saying, the bounty is out there, which was met with applause from the crowd. This announcement comes within weeks of Facebook's major corporate rebrand to Meta, a rebrand that CEO Mark Zuckerberg said would represent that better represented what the company does and aims to do. Armed with a treasure trove of leaked documents, Haugen accused... Where did Haugen come in? Hmm? 
All right, well, Hagen uh, accused the social media company of weak responses to COVID-19 misinformation and poor handling of political lies during the 2020 presidential election. Oh, yes, the Hagen leak, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Collectively dubbed the Facebook files also showed that Zuckerberg's company knew that Instagram was toxic for teenagers. Oh, how dare you? Letting them think about that kind of thing. The, anyways, the Facebook files are a reliable indicator that plenty of are disillusioned with the current state of social media. However, today's Reddit and so Salon Adventures announced its, its announcement is hardly the first time that decentralized, uh, decentralization has been put forward as the answer to the world's social media ills. Amid bans against TikTok and WeChat in the U.S. last year for centralized uh, for calls for decentralization, pardon me, decentralized social media grew. Platforms like Voice, uh, created by Block.1, a company uh, providing blockchain-based solutions aimed to give social media users control through transparency. When users interact on voice, those inter, uh, interactions remain public and they do not rely on algorithms to generate content. Conversely, Mastodon is a social networking site that is community-owned. Mastodon isn't a single website like Twitter or Facebook. It is a network of thousands of communities operated by different organizations and individuals that provide a seamless social media experience, according to the website. And just as a tack on at the end, if anybody hasn't already used library, uh, and or actually I think Minds was the other one I was thinking. There are quite a few different options out there that are all blockchain based. Now, library is one of them. It's not so much a social media platform as it is just a media, photos, video, and audio. Um, but it's a great place to put your content and you can participate in the library coin through odyssey.com. So there are other ways, but yeah, Mastodon is, I've, I've been aware of Mastodon's been out there for a while. Actually, I, I got started on Minds way back before it became a little bit more uh, right-wing associated. So, the, a lot of the people who were de disenfranchised after the um, uh, attacks on the capital of the United States mm -hmm. at the beginning of this year yeah. moved off of Twitter onto other platforms right. and made them seem more right-wing. Mm -hmm. But they're not, they're just you know, people who are disenfranchised moving to those other platforms. Oh, yeah. Uh, next news article written by Stacy Elliott. <clears throat> DeFi trading volume on large decks has jumped by 150% in 2021 so far. Chainalysis. Decentralized exchange are booming and their growth is currently outpacing that of their centralized counterpart according to a new report for, for from Chainalysis. Chain analysis. Between August 2020 to 2021, the value of the large decentralized exchange like Curb, Uniswap, and PancakeSwap grew by about 550%. The number of DEXs has grown by more than any other category. That puts them head and shoulder above that of over-the-counter brokers, centralized exchanges, and what Chainalysis calls high-risk exchanges, one with minimal know-your-customer requirements. In fact, the number of large decentralized exchanges has been on the rise, even as the number of total active cryptocurrency exchanges has been steadily declining, according to Chainalysis. In July last year, after rising steadily since January 2019, the number of all active crypto exchanges started to flatten out. In the 12 month that follows, the count dropped from 845 to 672. That wasn't a surprise from the Chainalysis research team, said Kim Gower, the firm's head of research, but it did leave some questions unanswered. They knew going into the data anal uh, analysis that there had been consolidation among crypto exchanges, she told Decrypt, but not how unevenly it had impacted different types of exchanges. Most of the decline appears to come from smaller exchanges shutting down. Gower said if there are mergers and acquisitions prompting those shutdowns, it's not clear from the data chain analysis an analyzed, uh, but she said she suspects many of them shutter because they can't get enough liquidity. The number of active exchanges used to follow the market a few years ago, but that stopped being the case when a few large players in each category became dominant and grew much faster than their smaller counterparts. As Chainalysis points out in the reports of the growth of DEXs coincides with the explosive growth of DeFi category in general. DeFi is a catch-all term for the group of financial products that allow their users to trade, borrow, and lend crypto assets without the need for third-party intermediaries. There is now more than $274 billion flowing into DeFi applications, and most of it is locked up in Ethereum-based DEXs such as Curve and Uniswap, per data from DeFi Llama. 
Growth among derivatives exchanges, which are still small in numbers compared to the other categories, had also been noteworthy. There were 265,000 transactions on derivatives exchanges in August. That was dwarfed by the 500 million transactions made on Texas in the same month. But the average size of transactions in derivatives was $79,000 compared to the $26,500 in Texas. Because the average transactions on derivatives exchanges were larger, the value of uh, the value on the term has grown even more than DEXs have in the last year. Large derivatives exchanges like uh, Deribit, Deribit, BitMEX, mm -hmm. and FTX soared by 686%, according to the report. We were seeing large investments going to these platforms, even though there's not many right, many right now that we have listed as derivative exchanges in our data, she said. But they're big and highly liquid. <clears throat> Perfect. Moving on. Crypto lender Nexo acquires stake in U.S. broker dealer Texture Capital by Andrew Asmikov. Nexo has announced it acquired a stake in Texture Capital Holdings Corp., a parent company of the U.S. broker dealer Texture Capital. The sta stake in Texture Capital is part of a seed round for the broker. Texture Capital is a member of the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, otherwise known as FINRA and is registered as a broker-dealer with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, otherwise known as the SEC. The firm specializes in the issuance and trading of digital securities using blockchain technology. Texture Capital is incorporated in the state of Delaware and registered in all 50 states. Regulatory ped pedigree is crucial for Nexo, as it allows crypto lending platform to enjoy the advantages of a broker dealer license and service us citizens serve yeah service us citizens said nexo in an announcement shared with decrypt today's announcement comes less than a month after new york attorney general Letitia james revealed that her office was conducting additional investigations into unregistered crypto lending and borrowing platforms at that time the nyag or new york attorney general uh, issued two unregistered crypto lending uh, crypto lending platforms with cease and desist letters also demanded three other platform handover information about their operations to Ms. James office. While the NYAG didn't name the companies in question, one of the company files was reportedly named Nexo letter, suggesting that Nexo was one of the entities under investigation. Nexo is not offering its earn product and exchange in New York, so it makes little sense to be receiving a cease and desist order for something we're not offering in New York anyways. A spokesman for Nexo told Decrypt at the time, adding that it was a clear case of mixing up letters, uh, the letters recipients. The other company hit with a similar order was reportedly filed under the name Celsius Network. However, Celsius later denied it received a cease and desist letter from the NYAG. While the invest investment in texture can be seen as a way of Nexo to bypass regulatory hurdles in the US, it's hard to say whether it came in response to the NYAG's actions. When asked how long the deal uh, has been made, uh, the long the deal has been in the works, a spokesman for Nexpo said that they were pleased with how quickly and efficiently the transaction developed and the firm, uh, that the firm managed to pass through all the required steps of our due diligence project process. Nexo also refused to disclose the amount of the investment, only saying that it had acquired a minority stake in Texture Capital, so less than 50%. The firm stressed, though, that it sees the Texture Capital acquisition as a strategic move, since the current stake in Texture allows the lender a far easier investment route while maintaining the same crucial licensing potential. A spokesperson for Nexo further admitted that in terms of compliance capabilities, the potential for future access to Texture's broker-dealer license can only can open many doors for Nexo in the U.S. I think this is a smart move uh, that I think maybe anyone else should try to do uh, with other uh, you know, U.S. broker-dealer companies like Texture Capital because uh, obviously Celsius is probably trying to figure something like that out. They moved from the U.K. to New Jersey in the U.S., uh, to get away from the issues that the UK was imposing on them. Um, but uh, US still has its own rules too. And uh, we just need more information to help the US understand that it doesn't need to clamp down terribly hard on these uh, operations, basically because people can do what they want with their money. 
Yep. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yep. Next news, written by John Jeff Roberts. Ripple, Ripple to launch Bitcoin and Ethereum Hub plans DeFi offering. Ripple is branching out to the San Francisco-based company whose business strategy has been based around the cryptocurrency XRP since its inception announced on Tuesday that it will offer its clients a handful of other tokens too. The new service named Ripple Liquidity Hub will launch next year and allow clients to buy and sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum Classic. The so-called hub will plug into Ripple's existing on-demand liquidity platform which lets banks, market makers, and other financial institutions carry out cross-border payments using XRP if they choose. Ripple says that the cash-to-crypto vending machine service CoinMe will be among the initial users of the new service. In an interview with Decrypt, Ripple executive Ashish Birla said the new offerings came about in response to clients asking whether the company could provide them and their customers with access to other cryptocurrencies. Ripple goes DeFi. Ripple also announced that it plans to offer crypto stakings and investment services as well as other products associated with the fast-growing world of decentralized finance or DeFi for short. After clients buy and hold Ethereum, it's only logical that they want the next generations uh, of services, said Berla, adding that the future offerings could also include NFTs. Ripple plans to let clients buy and sell Bitcoin and other offerings by letting them scan a variety of exchanges, OTC, <clears throat> over-the-counter desk, and other crypto sellers. <clears throat> a process like that Berla likened to, to price comparison sites like Kayak or Google Flights. Ripple plans to prove a shrewd one at a time when institutions and big investors of all sorts are piling into crypto. The company has developed relationships with banks and market makers around the world, each of which has a customer network of their own, positioning Ripple to get a cut of numerous large transactions. At the outset, Ripple will partner with a variety of third-party custodians to store crypto for its clients, but Berla says that in time, the company may build a custody service of its own, which could deliver another new revenue stream. Currently, Ripple makes nearly all of its income from selling XRP. And we'll leave it at that. Oh, let's, hmm, should I keep going? What do you think? Hmm. I don't know. I think I That's, covered most oh, Yeah, today. we got it. Yeah. Anson to add Solana to popular NFT DeFi analytics platform by Andrew Hayward. Solana has rapidly risen as a rival to Ethereum, thank goodness, for NFT collectibles and decentralized finance protocols alike, with significant uptick in activity in recent months alongside a surge of the price of Sol. That's the Solana. Um, there, what's it called? Ticker. Yeah, ticker, ticker. In the in the ecosystem, <clears throat> as the ecosystem expands, so too are tools to help traders, investors, and collectors alike navigate the space. Today, Nansen, a crypto analytics platform favored by NFT traders, announced that it will soon integrate Solana, joining Ethereum and other existing blockchain networks supported by the site. With the upcoming functionality, which is picked to launch in Q1 of 2022, users can tap into Nansen to track activity within Solana DeFi protocols, view how new Solana NFT collections are performing at launch, and view the sales and price patterns for popular existing NFT projects. Nansen has become a popular resource for NFT flippers, or those who aim to buy low and sell for a significant return, as the analytics tools highlight burgeoning sales trends the platform's smart money ethos has been praised by uh, NFT traders for tipping them off to rising interest in collections, for example. The platform tracks more than 100 million crypto wallets created by Ethereum, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, and Phantom, enriching the data with public wallet labels. That way, for example, NFT collectors can see which projects that, are, that the community's best known traders are buying into and selling out of, particularly with Nansen's NFT leaderboard feature. An NFT acts like a deed of ownership. Well, we already know this, so I'm just going to go skip right past that. In September, uh, Nansen CEO Alex uh, Svan Svanivik, I think that's right, Svanivik, yeah, told Decrypt about the opportunity he sees for the NFT space to introduce newcomers to the crypto industry and build affinity with digital collectibles. DeFi has brought the capital into crypto, and NFTs are bringing the people 
into crypto. He said, if you ask a normal person about finance, they don't care about finance. So why would you, why would they care about decentralized finance? But if you ask them about music, art, entertainment, or gaming, there's a lot of people who are really passionate about those topics. While Ethereum is currently the leading blockchain NFT uh, platform for NFT collectibles, Solana has emerged as a popular alternative in recent months. Solana's lower fees and faster transaction have apparently helped spur the adoption of the platform for collectibles, which has now more than 130 active projects per data from Solanasis, which is like Chainalysis. Crypto research firm Masari recently compiled data from CryptoSlam, which shows $500 million worth of secondary market NFT trading volume by the end of September. However, the findings excluded Solana Monkey Business, one of the top collections on the platform and favorite of celebs like Steve Harvey and Alex Ohanian. So the actual total is even higher. Meanwhile, DeFi activity has also climbed significantly in the platform since summer, with DeFi Llama reporting a current total of $15.2 billion worth of assets locked into Solana protocols. That's up from $1.22 billion in August 1st. It's a huge increase. Mm, in terms yeah. of SOL, SOL, rather than USD, it's a rise from $33.6 million to nearly $60.8 million pardon me, in the same time span. Hmm. The value of Sol cryptocurrency, uh, Solana's Sol cryptocurrency has likewise soared as the platform has been rising developer, has seen rising developer activity of late, growing from $34 on August 1st to an all-time high of $260 set on Saturday per CoinGecko. Hmm. So, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to see uh, a, a neat little tool, uh, something that I was already aware of, although not owning hardly any NFTs. Mm -hmm. Well, they aren't our, just on Raven. Um, <laughs> uh, I am interested in this because uh, and I do obviously participate with uh, Ethereum to some degree for trading of coins and, and, and whatnot for my own assets. Um, it's it, it's continuously bothersome and has been ever since this NFT tra craze has really hit the market in the current sense um that you know ethereum is kind of blocked up <laughs> and because it's kind of blocked up even with the london change in august uh it's still pretty expensive to move things around unless you're a whale and i am not a whale i might look like a whale <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay next news written by <clears throat> where are we at sorry um, Ethereum name service. Ethereum name service. There we are. Yeah, written by Tim Haki. Ethereum name service hits 5.4 billion dollars diluted valuation after ENS airdrop. A crypto domain tool, Ethereum name service, may have only just launched its native ENS governance token on Monday, but already the token has hit a fully diluted market capitalization capitalization of 5.4 billion dollars, according to crypto data aggregator CoinGecko. Fully diluted refers to the market capitalization if the total supply of ENS tokens were in circulation. ENS has a maximum supply of 100 million tokens, of which only a tenth of current uh, are currently in circulation. In the last few minutes alone, the price of ENS has surged to hit a high of $53.58. It's currently ranked the 176th largest crypto in the world with market capitalization of $586 million. What is ENS? Often with emerging technologies, we need to look back onto the order to look forward. In this case, we need to look back at the history of the internet. ENS is a blockchain equivalent of a domain name system. In the, in, the in the time before domain names, back when the web was still in its embryonic phase, users had to enter IP addresses to get to the websites they wanted. These days, internet users uh, couldn't fathom doing the same, especially now that every browser has a highly integrated search bar that will often get you to your destinations with a simple keyword. Like the internet of, in the 1990s, crypto is still in its very early days. To send anyone money, you would need to have their wallet blockchain address, which is even longer and trickier than an IP address. Ethereum name service hopes to do away with this by ena enabling people to register their blockchain address as .eth domains. Ethereum name service was set up by Ethereum found, uh, Foundation Illuminae uh, Illuminae Illuminae Illumine Nick Johnson and Alex Van uh, Van Der Sandy who received a $1 million grant from the foundation to continue the research and development of ENS. Coinbase applies for DAO. It also looks like Coinbase, 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 Coinbase? 
Coinbase for Coinbase <laughs> is on board. Eagle-eyed Ross came, uh, Campbell, one of the one of the core developers at Crypto Exchange Sushi Swap, tweeted that the news on Saturday that Coinbase was one of 1,013 candidates to apply to be an ENS de- delegate. <clears throat> in Coinbase's application, which you can review via Ross's tweet, the organization stressed that it is in complete agreement with the proposed ENS constitution and promises to bring its deep collective uh, expertise to the table uh, with the goal of helping ENS and the crypto ecosystem flourish. There you have it. A crypto startup is flying today and one of the world's foremost crypto exchanges but uh, is but a plucky candidate. Yeah, it's not, it's not funny. It's a contrast. Oh, this guy's way bigger than you are. How did that happen? Mm-hmm. Continuing on. Discord. Ooh, Discord. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sewing Discord. Yeah, I remember. Tim Haki says, Discord CEO teases integration with Ethereum wallet MetaBask. Mm-hmm. Last night, Discord CEO Jason Citron shared a screenshot of, on Twitter of what appears to be a MetaMask wallet connectivity feature inside the popular messaging messaging platform's user settings. That's very interesting. Mm. MetaMask is one of the crypto industry's most popular crypto wallets, boasting 10 million active users as of August of this year. I know I'm one of them. Uh, Discord currently doesn't support MetaMask, but the image has led many to believe that a major update to the platform is on the horizon. Citron also captioned the screenshot with the words, probably nothing, so make of it what you will. Discord, uh, pardon me, Citron's tweet came as a response to a blog post called Discord Image, a, uh, pardon me, Imagine a Place, which the which was tweeted by blogger Packy McCormick yesterday, and if you're on YouTube, you can see it. And the most in the post, McCormick calls the platform uh, the coordination platform of choice for all manner of projects, including NFT DAOs, crypto investing groups, and crypto startups. I don't know. It feels like we kind of played a po- role in that since we've been doing Discord mm-hmm. all this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, more relevantly, McCormick dedicates a section of his piece to discussing the idea of a Discord native crypto wallet. The same idea first surfaced in a survey back in August when some users were asked, would you be interested in using Discord native Web3 like a Discord native crypto wallet and giving us feedback? And here's another tweet. McCormick reasons that a native wallet would be beneficial to the platform's users and the platform itself, but Mm -hmm. concluded that it's easier said than done and Discord doesn't currently have the crypto chops on its team to pull it off. But it could require it could acquire a wallet and the team behind it, or hire a team with a pro, with the promise of unprecedented distribution. If we interpret Citron's screenshots as a hint of upcoming MetaMask integration, then the team is clearly looking ex- externally for its crypto needs. In any case, such connectivity could be a boon to the DeFi and NFT projects coordinating themselves on Discord servers today, yeah. like DAOs. So. Nice. Yeah, I think this is brilliant. This is very useful, yeah. and it would be very, 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 very much welcome to the the C3 Media team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Us, um, <laughs> absolutely, as man. Would be able to uh, allow yeah. us to integrate our own because uh, what we activities. What we've on, done with on, Discord on. was we tested out Tipbot uh, with crypto, and that seemed to work pretty good. But I think uh, Tipbot obviously is still a centralized like wallet. You should have to pull it out of there. But if you're if you're putting it. it if you're doing exchanges into your MetaMask wallet, well, it's it's yours, man. It's your it's your crypto instead of being stuck on the MetaMask MetaMask or sorry the tip TipBot account. Exactly. Yeah, I like it, man. Right. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm looking forward to it. Wait till they bring NFTs on there. Oh, and then they're gonna bring they're gonna bring the yeah. the metaverse. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's going to be, I mean, if, if anything goes the same way as, as uh, what Microsoft's been predicting with their metaverse concept, I, I can easily see Discord doing it. Yeah. I mean, Discord has a communi- the, the right community to do it. For. Yeah. Uh, next news, written by yep. Jeff Benson. Phantom Wallet preps mobile launch after reaching 1.2 million users on, on Solana. Uh, Phantom, the popular cryptocurrency wallet and browser extension that allows Solana users to transact with DeFi protocol. Uh, Excuse me. There's a spider. Where did that spider come from? Um, where was that? I almost broke my computer. 
uh, says it is preparing to launch a mobile version of its wallet. Chris Kalani, chief product officer and co-founder of Phantom Toll Decrypt, the company is planning a private beta around the holidays with a full launch in January. Phantom is Solana's answer to MetaMask, the Ethereum wallet built to interact with decentralized finance and other applications on the network via DeFi protocols. Crypto owners can take out loans, earn interest on their digital assets, and trade them with other users, all without relying on financial intermediaries. But to take advantage of the growing DeFi ecosystem on Solana, which now controls over $15 million in assets, you need a crypto wallet that can integrate with the network's nascent decentralized exchange, lending protocols, and liquidity pools. Though there there are other usable wallets, Phantom is perhaps the most popular. It allows traders to send, receive, or swap tokens within the Solana ecosystem. It has options for buying, selling, and even creating NFTs, the digital deed of ownership to digital and or real collectibles. The project recently touted reaching 1.2 million weekly active users. Kalani assured Decrypt those were not accounts or installs, but but actual users. Thus far, however, they've been confirmed to desktop which is less than ideal for DeFi traders on the go. The mobile app, should it arrive on time, will give Solana DeFi traders a much-needed resource in the market with limited options. Most other wallets, for instance, don't support staking dedicated soul to the network so it can become more secure and you can get rewarded in crypto. This means they can mint NFTs, stake tokens, or even and, and more while not being tied to their computer, which carries considerable weight, weight considering how fast the Solana ecosystem currently moves, said Phantom C- CEO and co-founder Brandon Millman in a press release. Okay, let's see. Solana is indeed moving fast. The Solana coin recently overtook Tether to become the fourth largest crypto asset by market capitalization. Phantom is growing along with it, according to the firm's estimate. In July, in July it secured a $9 million Series A a round led by Anderson Harowitz at the time it claimed just 70,000 users. In addition to Solana, Phantom is branching out to other blockchains with a beta Ethereum wallet in the works. That's all further down the road, said Kalani. Phantom is a laser focus is laser focused on Solana. Man, this is a lot of Solana's news for today. You notice that? Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. It's good to see it because I mean Solana's been making waves. Yeah. Continuing on, Liam J. Kelly's says, article, developers behind the Ethereum Solana Bridge raised $40 million in token sale. I don't know. feels like that's all it really needs to be said with that article. Okay. Go to the next one. just did it. Cool. Take the next so, one. Solana flips Tether again. <clears throat> you want me to do that one? <laughs> you don't have to do that one either, man. You can skip Solana that one. flips. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we already know that's what happened. Uh, and then it flipped back again. <laughs> Basic attention again. token up 25% follows following Brave Solana's integration. Oh, yes. Great. Well, that All I right. mean, it, it's good. I don't know well, if I need that to talk is, about it. That is actually pretty damn good because they've been stuck on Ethereum for like the longest time, man. So to do those transactions, like if you're earning bat tokens, like what I'm doing right now, you guys are watching me. For the, those that, that are watching me on YouTube, I this is the Brave browser. I am earning a small amount of, of BAT tokens, but it's like pennies. The transaction I move with the Ethereum yeah. transaction cost is so ridiculous that it just stays stuck in my what is it? What is it called? The up the up uh, the uphold yeah. the uphold the up, wallet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uphold, just, yep, yeah, uphold wallet, right? The uphold wallet. It just, it's just you can't move it because yeah. you, you never get any money out of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's true. I, I'll go into the steps here just, just to cover a little oh, bit okay, of what's go going on here. Basic attention token, a cryptocurrency, a privacy browser, a privacy centric browser, Brave, has shot up more than 25% in the last 24 hours. BAP, 25%, 7% surge follows yesterday's announcement that Brave browser will integrate with Solana, the fourth most valuable cryptocurrency by market cap. According to a blog spot, uh, blog post shared on Brave's website. So I'm going to see if we can find any more other detailed information here. Having reached 36 million, million monthly active users in September, Brave has been busily adding features in recent months. In June, the browser launched Brave Search, aiming to challenge Google's dom- dominance. Um, in October, Brave Search became the default search engine in the browser, replacing Google. And the browser introduced Brave Talk, a privacy-focused video conferencing feature in September, which I've already tried. It's actually kind of cool. So, yeah, um, basically, Brave, or Basic Attention Token, which we do accept, if you'd like to contribute, um, is going to move away from Ethereum, which I I get it. Ethereum, like Bitcoin, was early in its time. 
And so the reason mm -hmm. it uh, was used for everything was because it offered smart contracts in the first place and or NFT functionality. And that's why people are like, well, it's the only thing we can do and it's the only stable network. So we guess yeah. we have to use it. But now everyone else, lots of other options like Solana. So we, we actually did Brave Talk. Remember that when they first came out? I wanted to test it out with you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, I, I, I'm excited that they're... They, that they're in, that they're swapping over to to Solana, considering that now I can finally move my my coins out of Uphold and maybe do something with it. My Solana's free. Just let it go. Let it go. No, no, I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just did that. All right. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Let's see. Do we have one more here? That's that's it, dude. Unless you see anything else. Bitcoin tops records breaking six. Yeah, well, Bitcoin's breaking records every day, man. Five million Robinhood customers email stolen tokens company. Oh, Robinhood. Wah, wah, wah. Bitcoin friendly mayor Eric Adams brings city coin to New York. Hmm. New York will, so New York will soon have its own, very, uh, its own cryptocurrency thanks to the city's Bitcoin loving mayor elect Eric Adams. Last week he said he wanted the city. He already has one. Well, <laughs> Bitcoin. Right. This is city Your coin. coin, duh. City coin. U.S. Treasury adds Bitcoin exchange to sanctions list over ransomware links. Remember when President Joe Biden vowed to go after ransomware at actors? Not only is it happening, but it's bleeding over to the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Hmm. Is that is that worth a read? Maybe. Yeah, because it's U.S. Treasury stuff. So yeah, hit it. Let's see. The Office of Foreign Assets con uh, Controls, OFAC, the U.S. Treasury Department's enforcement agency for economic sanctions, today placed global cryptocurrency exchange uh, sh Shatex on its sanctions list alongside three companies that allegedly pro uh, provide it with infrastructure support. Estonia-based Izibits OU, Latvia-based uh, Chat Chat Chatex Tech, SIA, and High Trade Finance, LTD, from St. Vincent and Grenadines, as well as the Ukrainian and Russian national who allegedly operated recently ransomware attacks. <clears throat> ransomware is malicious software that hackers used to, uh, we don't need to read that. The Treasury Department claims uh, Chatex, which facilitates peer-to-peer -peer trades via social network Telegram, has directed ties to uh, Souks, a cryptocurrency exchange is it sanctioned on September 21st for facilitating payment for hackers. The sanction means that any chat, uh, Chatex assets in the U.S. are blocked and the American citizens and companies may not legally conduct most business with Chatex or its affiliates. The government of Latvia and Estonia have already suspended the registration of Chatex Tech and Izibit OU, respectively, according to OFAC. OFAC has added Ukraine national Yaroslav Yar Yar Yasinski, uh, a Russian national Yavinki Polinian, to its sanctions list. The former for his alleged role in deploying ransomware against uh, Ksenia, an IT software provider that was on the receiving end of a $7 million ransomware attack in July. The Treasury believes that both men are involved with certain 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 could could be are evil in eastern european hacking group that has raked in more than 200 million dollars in bitcoin and monero ransoms that's a hefty hefty chunk of 590 million dollars in reported ransomware payments the administration cite, cited today ransomware groups and criminal organizations have targeted american businesses and public institutions for all sizes and uh all size and across sectors seeking to undermine the backbone of our economy deputy secretary of treasury wally adi 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 wrote before the concluding this is a top priority for the biden administration uh, okay we gotta break down the crypto economy because it is for the safety of every people man we're gonna kyc you and know exactly yeah i don't know man i don't know i don't know what do you think what do you think Obviously, ransomware is a thing. I would hate it, it, it. Ransomware will destroy companies, man. It will just destroy economies, actually. You know? Yeah. So, in a way, no, yes. No, ran, ran. 
Go ahead. Ransomware is pretty heinous stuff. It, it is. It is not. I wouldn't say it's the bane of my existence. I kind of stopped doing the IT support thing, but I have saved a couple of people from ransomware before. Um, and it's it, it's the latest thing, right? It, it there's not even any need to corrupt a person's computer. You just need to get them to download this thing, and they can lock up your system and completely destroy everything you have. Now, that's from the standpoint of people not having backups. But mm. it's still kind of a pain in the butt to have to go grab your backup and put it back on your system. Now, if your IT department is smart, it's not going to affect you. It's going to be a little bit annoying. They're going to say, fine, wipe it out. We'll start you over. Mm. It's going to take us another hour, maybe hour and a half to get your computer back up and running, but big deal. The thing that really screws people is people who don't have the IT support, right? They get the ransomware on the computer because they were doing something stupid or they weren't paying attention and they got tricked. The computer gets locked up and gets, you know, hacked. Um, and I have encouraged people many times, both small businesses and individuals, to come up with a backup solution. That way, this, these ransomware attacks, even if they get you, don't really get you. So the problem the problem comes down to uh, abuse like this is the um, ransomware hackers. Once they know a target, they don't give up on you because they know they can get you again. Mm. So <laughs> mm. um, this, the, there's an insidious, like I said, there's an insidiousness when it comes to this kind of thing. And it just has to do with education. Um, as the adage goes, a fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> okay, nice. All right, I think uh, we're, uh, we are done. You want to uh, wrap this up? Uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. All righty. Sure thing. If you appreciate our content, please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. We post every Wednesday and Sunday. Check it out on YouTube. You can also visit with us, John, Blockchain John, myself, H. Avarelli, and Crypto Not Mike, as well as all the other people who participate with us on Patreon, well, pardon me, on Discord. If you'd like to contribute through Patreon, we have a $3, a $5, and a $10 uh, contribution level. If you go to three, it's kind of just basic, understand. We appreciate the support, but 5 and $10 will get you a lot more content than you would normally from just the basic contributions. You can also donate via Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, and now the new and improved Basic Attention Token. All right. Check all the yeah. links in the description below. Below, below, below. All right, Cryptonauts, with that said, oh, we are done for the night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening all around the globe. Until next time. Stack sets and hodl. Adios.